What is up guys, welcome to a new video. This is one that I really wanted to do this patch because so much is changing and this is really where I think it's useful to know to get ahead of the meta now as a jungler. We're gonna have our top five, but we have more honorable mentions than normal as well this time around. And remember to throw this video a like if you do, dislike it if you don't, and let me know whether you think I'm right or who I missed in the comments. So at number five, we're actually gonna have Sejuani right now. Probably not the one you expected, but she is creeping up and so much better. At the moment in the general game, right? Like it's kind of moving into a tank meta because AD carries are very strong again and we need like bigger front lines I guess to hold back their damage and stop them. We're also having like carry tops I guess so tanks in the jungle rounds out the composition a little bit more like at least we have a front line and you like tanks in general are just going to be good at fighting the enemy top and jungle carries like they're getting nerfed they can't kill you as easily now. I wasn't really sure at first if I wanted to put her on here because I'm probably going to get flamed for this one I think but I'd looked into it a lot and she is doing well at every single elo bracket. She is just very tanky and hard to kill but she has has that kind of natural damage as well like ideally what we're aiming for in a tank is be a tank funny enough be a threat so they can't ignore you and have ways to like survive longer we have the good base damage on our abilities so we're good when we're just like full tank but we're also better with just like penetration items you don't really need ap really to scale so you can get like a leandris or abyssal those are going to be good damage options sejuani is just one of the most versatile picks in that way like you can build damage if you want to carry harder but full tank if you're behind or that's what your team needs like either way you're going to do a lot your ultimate is game changing right like even even the worst teammates are going to be able to follow up on that. It's basically like a free gank at level 6 as well, as long as you can hit it, or at least you'll blow a flash. Your ganks are pretty good, your clear is decent, and trust me, like, people are going to struggle to kill you until very late into the game. So, at number 4, we're going to have Elise, and this is kind of just for now, but also preemptive ready for the next few patches. Elise is probably the best carry jungler you can actually play for early pressure and damage. Like, really hard to outduel her, she has crowd control, a way to dodge stuff, and she can kill you. Kha'Zix is also really effective, but he's kind of like an assassin jumping into the middle of everyone and when we see more tanks come up he's going to struggle a little bit because he just can't kill them the problem with Elise though is she's not the best in team fights like her kit is built around picks and ganks you're playing like for the first 30 minutes with Elise really get your team ahead and hope you can end the game this style is fine and you can snowball game really hard anyway but there are like new changes coming out basically rewarding your early game a bit more if you're a bit more aggressive these changes were announced yesterday they're going to be coming in a few patches the towers are getting like a first blood reward there's also more focus on ganking and this is in a few patches but still Elise is super good right now already but will become even better. Whenever you look around at stat websites she doesn't have an amazing win rate because people sit around and they don't really do anything. Like when you do this properly and snowball game use her early power you can hard carry. She is one of the best win rates in games that end before 30 minutes but after that she does drop quite a bit and I guess part of that is because early your damage is insane with just a few items. You can burn through tanks, you can one shot carry targets and outplay it pretty easily like runic echoes, rhylites, abyssals, all the damage you're going to need. It gives you a lot of pen, it slows defensive stats which you can turn around with tank items as well. It might not seem like she does a ton I guess but if you play her properly with the specific aim of ganking and getting a lead I think you're going to be surprised when you gank and you one shot someone. Okay so number three is a Mubu and he rarely ever gets put in these videos because he's so easy to take a hot steaming dump on early but right now that's not much of a problem. Early game champions have been nerfed a little bit more we're getting more passive picks I guess with these tanks and it lets you get through the early few levels. I actually think he could be number two or even number one for lower ranks right now like gold silver bronze are way too difficult to deal with in these games and you can carry with damage while still being very tanky the benefit of taking like a mumu over elise for example is that you'll be relevant the entire game you're just as good late game as you are early so while you don't have as much early pressure or damage there's no timer for you a mumu is easy to play pretty basic i guess kit wise and a lot of how good he is depends on items right now there are kind of two builds so cinder hulk or runic echoes in my opinion though runic echoes is a bit better for carrying but full tank is fine as well I think like runic echoes into sunfire abyssal rhylize leandries or go more tanky at the end instead is good because a move is passive like reduces magic resist when he hits someone abyssal reduces magic resist around him it's like sunfire and all of his abilities are magic damage right so his passive and abyssal are actually increasing all of it like normally sunfire is an average item on junglers not really worth it but for a mumu it's loads of extra damage that is just like itemization wise you basically make him fit into whatever you want but he has decent clear good ganks with his q if you can hit that his ultimate is insane and you can kill people a movie gets so much stick for him being like an average jungler like yes you can abuse him early but that's like one of his only weaknesses right now and in my opinion you aren't going to feel that much anyway right now so taking our silver medal is going to be ramus i said at the start like we are in an 80 focus meta 80 tops 80 junglers nobody better really to deal with that than ramus i wouldn't be surprised to see a shift into more ap picks like top and jungle literally just because of this guy but for now he's almost impossible to deal with unless he gets put really far behind clearing the jungle is kind of bad to be honest but ganks 
are good. Like, you can team fight well, and you can even take towers pretty fast. But I think part of it, like, the biggest part really is he's so hard to deal with with his build at the moment. You've already got, like, a built-in Thornmail with your W. Now an actual Thornmail second, a burn from the Cinder Hulk is ultimate. He just doesn't die. He does some damage. And, well, actually, honestly, you're probably going to kill yourself. The thing is with this, like, top laners and junglers can't really build to get through this guy. So Thornmail, like, how it works, it has two parts, right? The armor and the damage back to you. So you need armor pen to get through it and actually kill him, but you need life steal to survive the damage you do to yourself. Neither of these are actually that easy to buy for carry laners or junglers, and for AD carries, you have to have like four items to do that, I think. Normally, AD carries get two offensive items, then life steal or armor pen, and that's almost like a full build before you can actually deal with Ramus. Remember as well, Thormar damage is increased by 25% of your bonus armor. For Ramus already just stacks armor, that is going to hurt even more. Since life steal isn't really core on AD carries until much later now, Ramus is a much bigger problem than normal, like when he comes back in, and I think that's actually why he's suddenly one of the best. He is a good tank, don't get me wrong, but his itemization for him and lack of answers is really what's making him overpowered. And finally, for number one, we're gonna have Hecarim. No real surprise at all here. He's a monster, well, a horse actually, just trampling over everyone. Being honest, I don't see a reason to pick anyone else at the moment. He is so well rounded, like 100% he's pick or ban for me right now. The thing is, you're like tanky, right? You don't die and you can dive in. You have engage, you have sustain, you have your clear speed, you have damage, which is sustained damage and burst, and all of that from one offensive item and the rest of you is full tank. He is way too effective early into the game. He craps on AD carries who are supposed to be the answer and he can beat any other carry jungler who might try to stop him except maybe at least but then even then I think he'll probably win. I talked a little bit about him yesterday and everybody has probably experienced how strong he is. So he's wrecking every elo so I'm not really going to go too much into this one and go into our honorable mentions instead because I have more of them. So I actually have quite a few that I think are on their way up and becoming a lot stronger again but we'll see how much time I have. I don't want to make this video too long. So Fiddle Six is the first one. You have this huge AoE ultimate. It's really good in a more team fight focused meta where you're like grouping over towers or grouping over dragons. He actually ruins tanks with his drain as well. Like they can't really do anything. And also like we're in a mostly armor stacking meta right now. So you'll be doing more damage. He is pretty good against AD carries anyway. So the more popular they get, the more tanks we're going to see, the better Fiddle is actually going to become. You have decent utility with a fear and silence. You have good ganks for the same reason. And you're pretty well rounded actually. Especially at lower ranks, you hide over a wall, you let them think they're safe, and then surprise. Like, it's the easiest way to win and carry a game, even if you're behind. Warwick is another one who I've mentioned a little bit recently, but he kind of fits into this tank meta actually really well, because he builds tanky later into the game. Combined with, like, sustain, he isn't really likely going to die. The items you build right now are so insane. Like, Blood Razor and Wit's End are just crazy. Like, all of that on-hit damage is going to apply on your ultimate, and that's going to rip apart a carry if you ult on them, or even a tank if you find one alone. Quicksilver Sash was supposed to be the answer to Warwick. It always kept him down, but to be honest, right now it sucks. Like, pretty sure from my testing as well, if you use it, it now cancels the crowd control part, but not the damage part of Warwick's soul. Like, it will let you run away, but you'll still be taking the damage, and I think that's kind of ridiculous. I'm pretty sure it's the same for Malzahar right now, though I haven't tested that one, actually. He might fall off a little bit if the game becomes more early focused with this new update coming soon, but we're gonna have to see with that one. Right now, he's still really good. Zack is another pure tank that does a lot of damage, basically like a mini Amumu. Like, your base damage is very high. You just need kind of pen items like Abyssal to kill people. Not only is this going to make you hard to kill, but it also makes you a threat. Like, you have a surprising amount of burst damage and sustain damage, actually, if they leave you alone. You have good clear, you have good ganks, and a good team fight. And one thing I really like is how he can live for longer by disabling people. So he knocks them up with his E or jump than your ultimate as well. Like, more time where they actually can't attack, plus you have your passive as well. Being in an AD carry focus meta when ADs are actually pretty strong is not just about absorbing their damage, but it's stopping them doing damage. So either, I guess, the best way of doing that is to kill them, right? But you can crowd control them, you can make them run away. All of these things will make you last longer. I think this guy is actually very underrated and he's a good pick for your team comp as well, like a good team player, but can also do a lot of work and carry himself. So Skarner is basically the opposite of Zack. You build damage to do damage. He's very versatile though. You can go Cinder Hulk into Ice Bomb if your game kind of goes a bit tits up. The best at the moment though is Warrior into Triforce. Triforce is so overpowered on this guy. Like you have Sheen procs all of the time, attack speed, and just a crap ton of burst. I literally got one shot in the stun duration by a Skarner who only had had those two items yesterday. It was not a fun experience, and there's very little counterplay actually. Again, QSS sucks, right? It makes his ultimate better, makes his stun better, because it's more of a waste to buy it, and people just don't want to. 
you. He does have a speed up though, a shield, a stun, ultimate. Like you have this utility side of you and you can kill people. Honestly, there's not really much more you could ask for. Volley Bear is going to be the final one. I think I'm kind of running out of time. So he's kind of fallen out of favor recently, but he's still really good. He's that mix of tank and damage that we kind of want in this meta. Basically like a Hecarim, but just not as good. And I think that's the biggest reason he's actually not been picked more. He still kills people easily though. Good engage, very tanky, bait people with your passive easily, especially in 2v2 fights. And he survives a long time in fights. These tanks who build defense, but increase their damage at the same time are always going to be super good in a tank meta. And that's exactly what Volley Bear does. So I'd expect him to become a bit better this and next patch. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Not the exact formula I normally go for, I guess, with these videos, but I think this was the most interesting way to look at the role and its changes. Let me know what you think. Remember to like, subscribe, and share the video. But for now, let's go to the robots.